afternoon, everyone. All these smiling faces, so happy Tuesday. Are you there, Kay? Can you hear me? We can hear you, just can't see you. Oh, you can't, okay, sorry. Um, gosh, I was, let me just see. Huh. Hmm. You still can't see me? Yep, we can see you now, okay. Oh, can you? Good. Okay, sorry. I, my mistake. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody know if John Gallagher is going to be joining us today? No? Um, Councillor Armour. I believe um, Mr. Gallagher has emailed Brenda that he will be attending. I'm, I'm assuming he's just late and um, I can't remember the other member's name. Um, she will not be attending today. It's my understanding. Okay, all right, all right. perfect. But I believe we have quorum. We do have quorum. Hmm. So I guess we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, chair confirms that we do have quorum. Um, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Anish Anishibi under the terms of the Robin Huron Treaty Number 61 of 1850 and the Williams Treaties of 1923. We commit to acknowledge, learn, educate, create opportunity, honor, sacrifice places, sacred places, and take actions towards real truth and reconciliation in support of the commitment to walk in the path together in respect peace and harmony for future generations. Uh, has everybody had an opportunity to look at the movers, seconders? And is everybody all right with that? Yeah. Excellent. So um, I'd like to read, uh, it's recommended that the accessibility assess Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting agenda dated May 25th, 2021 be adopted as printed in circulars. All those in favor? And that's carried. Welcome, John. Do we have any disclosures of pecuniary interest today? Seeing none. Um, we have no deputations. Uh, CA Corey has to leave us today, so she'd like to do her pred move 8.2 up to now. Is everybody all right with that? Mm -hmm. About the update? Excellent. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hope you had a great long weekend. Uh, so there was a, um, a discussion that took place at, I believe it was council, it might have been general committee, uh, a while ago when we were advised, the town was advised that they were receiving extra funds through the federal gas tax, um, uh, which actually would uh, allow us to spend money in certain areas. And, and one of those areas that was mentioned was accessibility. So it sort of triggered a, a bigger discussion about some of the projects in the town of Huntsville's accessibility plan um, that had not been completed and it was noted uh, that it was pending funding. So uh, in discussions with um, Councillor Schumacher and, and uh, Chair Armour, it, it was suggested that perhaps uh, we just do just a bit of an overview on what was actually included uh, in the 2021 budget to deal with accessibility um, projects. So uh, I did have our deputy treasurer pull together a list um, and I just thought I would just quickly go through that list just to remind uh, committee just some of the items that were included uh, in the 21 budget. Um, so some of the main, some of the standard expenses that, that were in there were just expenses that pertain to the committee. Um, the accessibility advisory committee has $300 for expenses per year. Um, there was accessibility uh, door repairs at the Civic Center, a budget amount of $10,000. Uh, 
Uh, there were further door repairs at this, the Civic Center um, that actually they've got this in here twice, it looks like. So there was a couple of repairs for the doors, so $10,000 each. Uh, marketing, we were working on site improvements and annual subscriptions uh, that dealt with accessibility and website uh, functionality uh, in order to make uh, it more accessible on our website. That was just under $3,000 that was in the budget. Um, we did have um, marketing money that was put in for accessibility purposes. And it was to deal with uh, p uh, making documents PDFs and readable for accessibility purposes. And that was a tune of about um, $30,000 that was put in the budget for that. Uh, now that particular one was actually funded from a reserve so there wasn't any impact in the levy but it was still a commitment of $30,000. And then the library also had uh, $3,500 in their budget for an accessibility ramp. Um, I think it's also important to note that after the budget was passed, there were a couple of projects um, that were completed that had a, an accessibility component to it. Uh, the first one was Support Sydney Beach. There was a capital project that was completed to the tune of about $60,000. And this included accessibility features, um, including handrails and a ramp and a mat, I believe, down at the Port Sydney Beach. Mat. So those, yeah, a Moby mat. Those were things that were included after the budget was approved. Uh, and then the COVID vaccination center, we actually, um, we, we found out fairly quickly that uh, accessing onto the arena floor was not very accessible because the ramps that we had uh, weren't very good. Uh, so we did invest roughly, I think it was just, just under $5,000 um, to uh, construct those ramps that are currently being used for the vaccination clinic, uh, but they will remain with the town of Huntsville for future use to um, access the floor, which is a great thing. Uh, I think it's also important to note that the accessibility plan does speak to several projects uh, that are as per approved budget. So there, there might be items in there, and I actually don't have the plan right in front of me to reference, but there might be items in the plan that uh, if a departmental budget looked like they were going to come under budget for whatever reason, they would have some flexibility to complete some of the projects within the plan if their budgets permitted them to do so. Uh, so there's a little bit of flexibility for that. Um, and I, I think an example, I, I'm just looking at our deputy treasurer's notes. And she said an example of this project was the access to sidewalks and intersections. Um, and if there's any accessibility changes in the standards, it's included in the project costs as opposed to looking for additional funding. So um, even though it might be noted in the accessibility plan, access to sidewalks and intersections, instead of looking at applying a separate budget, we would include it in the project, um, the actual project itself to get completed. So, so those were just a few of the items, Mr. Chairman, that the deputy clerk did provide. And, and I'm not sure if either you or Councillor Schumacher would like further expansion on what was discussed at Council or if committee had questions, but I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. Um, does the committee have any questions of the CEO? I'm getting Councillor Schumacher? Oh, <laughs> Councillor Schumacher, go ahead. Mike. Um, yeah, I guess looking at, so you don't have the report that Crystal had originally done for council that outlines, because there, I guess for me being new this year, there were a number that were, so one was the accessibility, say, for somebody with sledge hockey to access the Don Lock, which it sounds like we did do that with, with the COVID. It was like, I think it was if $86,000 comes to mind for a project that they'd gone out to tender back in like 2011. So we're talking like 10 years ago that say that particular project was on. There's Julia too, she can speak to some of this. Um, and then yeah, things like the transit survey has been on the list. I'm not sure how many years in a row that's been on there. I know that Deb Kerwin and Steve Hernan had gone around and looked at bus stops. And so, I, I mean, I know I was probably the one who brought up the gas tax and whether or not some of that funding can apply to things such as the transit survey or some of these things that are sitting on the accessibility for I'm not sure how many years that we kind of say if there's budget money can we take a look at this because I know we meet accessibility standards for say our bus stops right now but if we could do some upgrades if we could take a better look at them I think there's more we could do. So if I may respond Mr. Chairman to, to that. 
Uh, so, so what we're doing actually as a senior team, we do have a meeting scheduled. I, I want to say it's next week, but my calendar's a bit of a blur right now. But I think we're meeting next week where we're actually looking at the strategic plan. We'll be looking at accessibility plan um, and looking at items that we think potentially could fall under the criteria, which Julie can speak to. It, it's a little it's not as, as, as clear and as easy to spend those funds as what you know we would hope they were because there's quite a few parameters we have to meet. Um, but we will be revisiting uh, all of those plans to determine if the extra federal gas tax money, the one-time funding can be used to clear some of this, these items up that were in the plan. Um, I, I know some of the things such as transit, you'll be seeing Director Hearn and we'll be bringing a report back to the committee cycle in June that will bring that matter back in front of in front of committee because um, we, we've, you know, the last time we dealt with it, it was decided that we'd hold off on implementing some of the recommendations. So some of that stuff, you know, may have already been addressed, but just needs to come back in front of committee. So um, unless Julia had something that she wanted to add to it, that's that's just a summary. Um, I, I guess just two things I just wanted to add is, is when, when I went through the accessibility committee and looked at, or the accessibility plan and looked at some of the, um, some of the items that have been identified, and I, I know which, which report you're talking about, Councillor Schumacher, with, with the items, and, and some of them, such as the, the sledge hockey, it says that the ACC has identified this as a long-term vision, so there isn't actually a recommendation to move forward with it yet, so I think until those things are brought forward as recommendations to council to proceed with it, I don't think we've in, we would include it yet into into looking for the cap, putting it into a capital plan for that. So I think I think a little bit more direction might be needed on some of those items. Um, some of them they were you know when funding was available, and I think those have been addressed. But maybe we need to look at what's still left there and and when it's going to be brought forward. Um, because again, I don't think the the direction is, is specific on on when and when and how. Um, and, and I guess this is the other thing just with the federal gas taxes, the, the one parameter that we have to remember with the federal gas tax money is it has to be used for um, items that have been identified as priority items in our, our asset management plan. So if it's a new item that we've never identified as, as needing replacement, that sort of thing, it, it, can't be, it can't be used with that money because it has to be included in our asset management plan. So something like the you know, new bus shelters, we, have a, we don't actually have those on our books right now. Um, so those ones might be might be a little bit tricky to to use out of that that funding. So I'm not sure if that helps or not. Yeah, thanks for that. So are, do you think it would be best if we just had the um, uh, report come back to this committee on those items and where they are currently stated? I don't know if everybody saw the email that Deb sent through. There's quite a few things listed there. So no, that just went to yourself and myself and uh, and actually. It went to Steve Hernan and Simone Babineau, Denise. So I can we can forward that on to you guys if you want. Um, yeah, Deb's got a list. I think from being on this committee previous, I mean, one of our basic things was you know accessible picnic tables. Like how often do we put those when there's funds available, say at Lions Lookout or at different beach areas to provide an accessible picnic table for for people. So yeah, just quite those things. We probably don't think of making it as a resolution here to then forward it to council for little things like that, but sometimes those little things get lost. So maybe it's a better process on our part as a committee of, and, and I think maybe looking, sending out that report of crystals that she had done for council because it was a great report to to let the committee see what some of those past recommendations because some of them were were sort of new to me being a new member as well. Yeah, uh, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. So uh, what, what I can just advise is that within our strategic plan, although we have a number of um, goals and objectives that are identified, we also have uh, different lenses that we look at everything that we do. And, and actually one of those is accessibility. So even though, um, e even though there's not a formal resolution that says that, you know, you need to make sure that benches or uh, playground equipment or whatever the case may be um, has to be accessible. That's actually a lens that we, like we call it a lens that we look through when we're carrying out the, the, um, the goals and objectives of the strategic plan. So we kind of make that as part of our our process thinking moving forward. It's, it's, not, 
it's not a directive that, you know, staff do this project and make sure it's accessible. It's just automatically something uh, that's in the forefront for us. Now, are there sometimes things that we may overlook? I, I'm sure that there are. I'm sure, you know, um, Deb Kerwin, when she was on the committee, she, uh, I'll say she reminded us many times that, you know, oh, well, you forgot this. Oh, yes, you know, we, we, we did forget that. So um, I, if I could have a copy of the list, I'd be happy to follow up with staff. And we can report back at your next meeting with respect to those specific items. Um, we can actually do a full follow-up on that. That's no problem. That would be excellent. Thanks. Does anyone else have any questions for the CEO? I don't see any. Looks like you're free to go. Bye. So next on our agenda, we have uh, reports from municipal officers. Uh, 5.1, Chris Nagy, he here to talk about the accessibility checklist. Chris, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Armour. Um, yeah, so we have our report coming forward, which is the accessibility checklist that um, Curtis and I presented earlier on this year. Um, the whole thoughts behind this checklist is that it's a living document and as things uh, progress, um, it can be altered, but uh, the end goal, it kind of streamlines the whole planning process. And uh, as detailed within the report, um, it's suggested that um, should committee feel it appropriate that uh, planning staff will use the checklist uh, with developers and um, uh, at the consultation stage. So they get an idea of, you know, um, code related requirements or OP related requirements and, um, and then some best practices that uh, committee may be uh, um, suggesting that uh, get incorporated with development. So that's about it. Um, we are looking for a motion uh, from this committee um, to, uh, uh, to get it approved and uh, bring it to council. So that's about it, but uh, any questions, let me know. Thanks, Chris. Um, good report. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the checklist again? Laurel, do you have a question? Yeah, I don't seem to get um, any of these other reports. Like, I haven't seen the report, and I, I, there's, you said something about motions before. All I can seem to get is the agenda. Like, am I, I don't know where I'd get all the rest of the stuff. Maybe it's just I'm not computer literate enough. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it was sent out in two separate emails. So maybe Tanya can speak to that. Um, my understanding is um, Brenda, and if Brenda wants to bring her screen up and maybe explain, she sent an email out that had two links. One link was to the PDF agenda and the other link was to the HTML agenda. You could click on either link to bring up either agenda, whichever prefer uh, preference you had. And everything is in there. Um, I don't know, Brenda, if uh, you want to elaborate. Or I'm just attempting. Can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just attempting to get my uh, video up and going again, guys. So I'm struggling here with that. I think it's because Denise and I are both using the same. That might have affected it. Um, Laurel, so I sent out an email with the link to the two attachments. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go back to that. Yes. So if I if I press the HTML one, mm -hmm. I should get all the stuff? Is that what you're saying? Or the PDF. I yeah, yes. either or. Either, either, either or. one. Yeah. Okay, do you want me to call you another time and you can tell me <laughs> rather than take up this time? So I'm open to the PDF one. Okay, if you just and click got, on that. I've got the agenda, but then I can't go anywhere else. That's all I get. You can't click on the PDF, the highlighted? I think I'm trying to share my screen and here, if you can see it, okay, yep. Brenda sends an email and there's two yep, links. I've got that, yep. You got that? And yep. so one you can click on as a PDF and the other is the HTML. Now I okay. know in the past we've had issues with 
certain if you click one the report doesn't come up and if you click the other it does so that's been an issue okay the pdf one i've got i've got the i've got the agenda up but that's all that comes up i can't go in like nothing else i can't get anything else but the agenda so the one one comment if i could add um i know the reports always follow the agenda so if you keep on scrolling down but i can't it doesn't uh, the, go anywhere I can't, I can't oh, make, hmm. okay. I don't know why I've never been able to. Okay. So maybe I should try Do you want me to maybe call that. somebody else another time and we'll figure it out? I don't, it's gotta be. Yeah, we'll probably do it. Maybe get someone to contact you and do a one-on-one -on -one with maybe someone from it and they can help you get through that. Or talk okay. You yeah. It. Just because that's always been a problem ever since I've been doing so it's probably something I just don't know. Okay. Thank you. So does anybody have any question, other questions for Chris? Oh, I see John. Thanks. Yeah, I've had a chance to go through that uh, list there. Just a question on the, uh, the last page. It talks about interior of buildings. Now, I don't think the site plan approval is allowed to deal with interior. So is this more just being put out there to say, look, when you're designing your building, have regard to the inside as well? And if that's if that's the case, then I think it's uh, it's smart to have that up front, but just as long as it's not being used to hold up uh, a development where it's not in compliance with the uh, Planning Act under uh, Section 41 of the Site Plan Approval. Yeah, if, if I can respond. Uh, Go ahead, uh, Chris. Yeah, so John, you're absolutely right. You know, the, the message that we got around the table when we were creating um, this checklist was uh, there are some interior entities that were either seen out in the field as inspectors or from this committee, they've noted that, you know, there could be some enhancements for, for interior aspect. And it is just a upfront, Hey, you're building a commercial building. You should be thinking about this at your, at your planning, you know, at the design stage rather than waiting until later on. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, John. Perfect. Does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, just more Councilor comment. Schumacher? Just more comment, Chris. I do really like it, and I know we've seen it a number of times. I appreciate that you have the sort of the standards on the one side, and then those best practices or the nice to kind of haves on on the other side. And I know as a committee, that's where we've kind of talked about that we'd like to see Huntsville maybe go beyond those basic standards to a level that is, you know, that much better, more inclusive and, and create that welcoming community for anyone with a disability. And I think you weren't at the last meeting when we did kind of talk about this. So I just wanted to verify and I believe it is correct, but this does match with the new uh, CPP, right? Community planning process. It's all in line with everything as we're moving forward, correct? Exactly. And, and, and that, that's why we were so crucial on Kind of getting this checklist uh, involved in that um, discussions with uh, Richard are if we can uh, you know assume some of these things within the C CPP then it makes it that much smoother right so yeah excellent I uh, see another question John go ahead sorry just on the uh, the timing of this sheet I mean is it uh, I've got a couple of projects that are coming up I'd like to share this information with the designers because we're at the, this stage in the game where we're getting ready for site plan approval on a couple of uh, larger projects. Uh, do we have any issue with me uh, providing that for information purposes only to them? Uh, from my point of view, absolutely not. Chris, do you feel the same way? Yeah, it's it's a public document as, as it's attached to the agenda right now. So yeah, Thank it's you. just... Uh, I think the biggest thing, the biggest question is, is uh, uh, can staff actually hand it out, right? That's that's what we're deciding right now. So, yeah. Perfect. Any other questions? I don't see any. Is there so, a resolution? Oh, I have one here. I, yep, I'm gonna read it now. So it's moved by John Gallagher, seconded by Dan, Diane Lupton. It is recommended that committee approve the accessibility checklist as Appendix I to report DEV 2021-63 within the site plan approval application. And further that, any future changes to the site plan approval process include this document. 
And further that committee recognizes this is a living document, which we may periodically update it with the committee's input. Does anybody have any questions on that? All in favor? And that is passed. Thanks, Chris, very much. Thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to previous business. Number six, 6.1, Kay Leslie, um, read the electric scooter update. Uh, and the Toronto news release was attached. Do you have any update for us, Kay? Um, yes, thank you, Chair Armour. I just, it will be very brief. Um, it, it is pretty evident by the press release, but um, in Toronto, uh, the city council did indeed agree to prohibit the use of the um, electric scooters anywhere in public spaces, bike paths, um, other trails, etc. cetera. And um, this was based on the liability concerns, insurance um, inadequacies and, um, and, and public safety for people with disabilities in particular. So, um, you know, they, they cited other cities that, that uh, have also agreed with this pro prohibiting of um, the e-scooters um, in, you know, Chicago, New York, Copenhagen, et cetera. Um, so, uh, and they have also recommended the use of helmets for anyone who is indeed using an e-scooter. So, so I think that um, speaks very well um, of the, the concern for safety, um, whether these scooters were um, privately owned or rental, you know, so uh, commercial. So I think, uh, I think that was a very sound uh, decision. And I, I hope that, um, you know, other towns and municipalities will follow suit. So, um, so that's, that's it. Thank you for that. Very good. I believe when we're speaking to um, bylaw, Andrew Stiller, I believe you said that our current bylaw covers this. Is that not correct, Schumacher? Yeah, I, I, and I know it's coming before council again, but he he did sort of say he was under the impression of what was going on in Toronto and was kind of referring that we are looking at updating our bylaw on bicycles, scooters, et cetera. It's in the, the current stage. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions for Kay? Not seeing any. Uh, new business. We didn't have any new business come through today, but uh, move on to number eight, which is general information. And we have uh, uh, Julie's here with us, and she's going to give us a report on 8.1, and that's the Port Sydney Beach update. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. Um, I do have a little. Um, I do have a little PowerPoint here. So, and I've never uh, as many times on the Zoom meetings. I haven't done a video yet, so I hope this will work. Um, if not, it's mostly me talking, so it's okay if you don't hear it. Sorry, I'm having... Okay, um, let's get zoom up here. Um, can you see my screen? You're sharing your screen now. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, so we just wanted to give, um, Denise kind of preempted a little bit, but just to give you some, just a little overview on some of the projects we've been working on. Sorry. So the first is the, the Port Sydney Beach. And I'll see if I can get this video. So this is a, a project that we're working on down at the Port Sydney Beach. Um, not done yet, but you can see the pathway there. Excellent. <clears throat> and then uh, our, our councillor Schumacher did a little video here, so I'd like to share that as well. Oh darn, you can't We just hear don't it. have any sound. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's okay, I can tell you what we were talking about. So, 
You never sounded so good. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Again, I, I was just talking about the, the grant that we got. Right. I know there's always an easy trick to this, and I can't. I don't know if anybody else thought. No, I'm not sure of it. It's okay, Julia. You can move on. <laughs> Now we have to remember all the things. Anyway, Dion, Dion did a great overview of, of all the different, and I'll, I'll let her explain kind of what the That's she did. Was. I'll send it out afterwards. Okay. And here's just some, so go ahead, Councillor Schumacher, if you want to. Um, yeah, so in the update, it was mostly that uh, we were talking about in the 2021 capital budget, we had already put aside, it was over $200,000 to do work on that Port Sydney Beach. But with the Inclusive Communities Grant that I think I did mention to you guys back in March that we were able to get for $60,000 from the Ontario Ministry of Seniors and Accessibility, we were able to then enhance, obviously, the accessible features for the Port Sydney Beach. So, so, and as committees aware, we did these two parking spaces up above and one in the lower parking lot, but with the, the way the grade of the Port Sydney Beach goes, it wasn't as accessible. So now with that $60,000, we were able to create that paved path, as you see, with handrail um, to get down to that level area. And of course, one of the big things is going to be the mobility mat that will have access for people with disabilities and people with mobility issues to access the beach area that will be installed for the summer month. And there's gonna be leveling um, and ability for people with disabilities to access the pavilion area, the, the new dock that we enhanced, and of course the wharf area as well. So it was great that as we had the capital budget, obviously as we do any upgrades, the committee's aware, right? We have to meet AODA standards. So when we're doing upgrades, we have to do access to, to public spaces is one of the key pieces, but thankfully for the we like to thank Ontario, province of Ontario, when the, you know, um, inclusive communities grant program for this sixty thousand dollars, right? Because it just creates that much more opportunity for accessibility, and helps us meet our one of our accessibility goals, which is the town of Huntsville is co committed to promote to promoting an inclusive community that is dedicated to. Uh, pursuing healthy and balanced lifestyles for everyone. I found that in our accessibility plan. Julia helped me <laughs> with that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schumacher for that. Um, and then the next one is uh, Longs Lake Beach. And I, and I believe Councillor Schumacher is gonna just kind of- Yeah, so in, in the Utterson, in the, or just in our 2021 capital uh, budget projects this year as well, um, we put in $25,000 and that is to do accessibility upgrades and some landscaping for the public beach. So we went from those rickety old stairs, as you saw in that first picture, to we now have a nice level uh, path that sort of meanders down to the public beach area for people to be able to access. Not as, as nice as the paved one, but at least provides more accessibility for people to be able to get to and enjoy our beach areas. And that was everything. Thank you very much for that. Do any of the committee members have any questions of Julie about that? Excellent, thank you. Um, that moves us on to 8.3 actually, which is the council update. Um, Councilor Schumacher, would you like to spearhead that? Sure. Um, well, I have first my one update I was going to do is on April 29th, we did have the district accessibility committee that I attended on the town of Huntsville's behalf. So they did a number of presentations. Uh, so the district of Muskoka had a website presentation because as you know, that's some, one of the last pieces of the AODA compliance is to make sure everybody's sort of computer and IT systems are up to date and need accessibility. So that's the town has worked on creating an accessibility upgrade for their website. So they were able to share that with us. There was also a presentation called Home for Good. And that is that the district purchased a building on 49 Pine Street 
and they're turning it into transitional housing program for um, Muskoka's youth who are homeless or at risk of being homeless. So the primary age for that group to go into those, um, it's gonna be 12 self-contained units. And so the age ranges from 18 to 24 to try to work to get homeless youth in that area off the street and sort of move into a transitional stage to be able to then have their own place later on. So of the 12 units though, two they're looking to make fully accessible. So, I mean, the, the committee kind of talked about, could we make all 12 accessible? The cost obviously is, is astronomical, but they were able to make two with interior ramps and everything is, is the goal to at least have two of those 12 units to be fully accessible. Um, so that's a great start. Uh, the district itself also did an update and showed us their accessibility improvement projects that they had done. And Councillor Armour is probably aware of that, having working out of the, um, the district office there at times. So they've done work with their interior ramps and have railings um, and the ability, the parking spaces. They're creating uh, two bathrooms that are together, a male and female one just off the ante room near the, the council chambers and creating one accessible washroom that will be gender neutral. They're working towards that. They're doing upgrades to their bathrooms, such things as even in the men's washroom, having a handrail beside the urinals for people with mobility issues and those types of, of um, upgrades. Their new door sizes to 36 inches from the existing 34 to create space, right? So it was great to see the updates that um, the district offices are doing. They also, we had a bit of a presentation on Rose Warren, the waste uh, diversion facility, the new facility that they're doing. It's not really going to be open to the public. It's again, sort of a transfer, but they are aware that if they did have anyone working for them with a disability, the, the way that the plant's laid out, it would have access for somebody working there to be able to do. We had um, a present, well, not a presentation, a um, sort of a, a, a paper sent to us from um, Action Not Words. They're an advocacy group. They sort of started in York region um, and they are wanting some sort of um, help around the fact that congregate care is underfunded and there's not many options for community-based living. So a number of persons with disabilities end up in long-term care. Um, we talked a bit about it and decided it should go. So it was forwarded to the District Health Services Committee on May 20th for information. So there was no real resolution required, but they wanted to just sort of bring forefront the information around the fact that they're finding, especially with the pandemic, options for people with disabilities to live at home and not in long-term care and how can we work forward to make that happen. And so those are pretty much the accessibility updates from the town or from the district and I gave our town update, which was quite extensive, I felt. Um, we are doing a lot of work and I wanted to showcase that we've done quite a bit of work as an accessibility group, I think. So yeah, um, as far right. as other council updates, I was just gonna say that there really was the um, I mean, streetscapes going on and the Excel accessibility pieces that we were talking about with the beach upgrades in, in my area for Port Sydney and Utterson. And I'm trying to think what else really to talk about with this committee. Dan? Uh, a big thing right now is the, um, it's an update Main Street. Uh, they're, they're working with the BIA and the town staff to ensure the stores fronts are still accessible for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think they're also that up putting the they're market. putting in the, the new steps down around the town hall. If you haven't come by and seen that yet, that's going in. And we're also dealing at the council right now of replacing or doing something on the front of the building of the town hall because those stairs are damaged and crumbling and need to be replaced. So we're currently working on that one. And we're going to be lots of activity happening in River Mill Park this year too. So. I don't know. If yeah. Councilor Schumacher, is anything else to add to all that? But there's no, lots, of ha no, lots happening in our town. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, I know I brought it back in March, so we did get an update that they are working to make the website available for people so that they do know 
because we didn't want people to avoid downtown for eight months because of accessibility issues. So it is part of the construction company has to make the fronts of stores accessible. Um, so we are making sure that people are aware what are, are the more accessible areas to be able to still access downtown while construction's going on and how best to do that. So we're working with that Digging in Downtown website that's up there um, that you can access through the Town of Huntsville website. And oh, also please, if you have not, please do your survey on myhuntsville.ca. We are currently in the process of doing the community services master plan. And as the vice chair of community services, I guess I really should be, you know, uh, letting you guys know that we want input from the accessibility committee on that areas. We've done some, some con the, the consultants, I think have talked to some people in particular stakeholders, but there is that website and, or that survey that's up on the website. So please, please make sure it's up there until June 20th. So have your say around our new community services master plan as we get going. And I'm not sure if the way the wayfinding signage survey is still up or not. If it is, please look at that one as well, because we were trying to, you know, we want to make sure that people can get around Huntsville and, and, you know, from the lens of accessibility, it would be great to have sort of that knowledge too on how to have the accessible bit of signage around town to be able to, to access our community. And I think the new, they were working on the street lights at West Road and Center. So I think that that new, um, the traffic installation and stuff is all up and running there as well. Thank you for that. Does anybody have any questions of myself or Councillor Schumacher? I don't see any. So we'll move right along. Um, so uh, 8.4 is the, it's the National Accessibility Week is May 30th to June 5th. I would imagine we're going to be doing a, uh, a flag raising, virtual flag raising that week. I don't know if anybody's heard about that yet, but. Um, well, yeah, I had sort of put this on the agenda because I know David reached out to me and I think yourself, Dan, in that email, I don't know if you got that, um, about what we're going to do. So I did a little digging and looked around. I guess we have acknowledged it. 2018 was the first year as the National Accessibility Week. And then I don't think we've done anything as a town for the last two years. This year, 2021 is the fourth annual recognition of National Accessibility Week. So um, 2018, I wasn't on the committee at that time. I think they did some stuff around signage or flag raising at that time. So I, I'm assuming we have a flag that can be raised. And again, I did reach out to our, oh, there's Tanya. Do we have a flag? Not to my knowledge. I've okay, never seen we a flag. don't have a flag. No. Okay. <laughs> nope. Brenda's saying no either. Well, that's but, good yeah. to know that we don't have a flag. So we won't be doing the virtual flag raising. But I'm okay. sure we'll do some um, Twitter releases and through the media through Town of Huntsville. Well, that was the suggestion that I know Deb had said. Is there, do we want to do something article wise on maybe like the grant that we received? for the Port Sydney Beach, um, you know, some of those things. So I guess I'm sort of asking the committee, how do we want to recognize and create awareness of National Accessibility Week? Do we want to find, is there a business in town or organization that has made, you know, their, their place more accessible um, and showcase them? Do we want to showcase what we've done in the community um, and, and have an article around that. I reached out to the district committee to see what they've done in the past. And um, one of the representatives from Bracebridge had gotten back to me and apparently they do have a flag. And of course, in the past when they were able to be open in May and the farmer's markets were open, they had a table and like showcased how the accessible um, uh, <coughs> streets signals work and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, we can't do that in this year's climate, but sort of thoughts from the committee on what we would like to see sort of acknowledged for Accessibility Week. Okay, go ahead, Kate. 
Thank you. Um, I, one of the things that I was actually chatting briefly with with Brenda Jones about just prior to the meeting was um, that um, the CBC has been doing some uh, feature, you know, interviews and so on on Ontario Morning. Um, Julianne Hazelwood is the host of that program, and um, she, uh, CBC Radio One, so she. Um, contacted me and um, did a, 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 a story, I guess, um, on last Friday, um, which went to air. Um, and she has sent the link, which I can gladly forward. But it was about um, how, you know, COVID has impacted, you know, people with disabilities. And uh, she focused on a group of blind and visually impaired individuals. And in this case, um, and how we were supporting each other um, throughout by Zoom calls and so on. And we talk about everything from technology to, um, you know, to issues uh, with the general public. Uh, you can imagine being blind, you're not always aware when you're six feet or more away from someone. And there's been some pretty drastic reactions from people. Um, and, uh, you know, although I, if, I don't really understand how they could not realize that we can't negotiate space the same as everyone else. But anyway, um, we talked about, you know, audiobooks and what's getting us through, but mostly how we support each other. So I was saying to Brenda, maybe this might be an ideal time to um, have her contact Ms. Goka and, and um, this committee, for example, in and, and maybe do a, a little feature article on, it could include both a, a business who has gone beyond, you know, the standard for accessibility or, uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure the beach in Port Sydney would be of very high interest, things like that. And maybe a little bit about what the plans are for downtown. But I, I just thought this might be an ideal time to, to create more awareness, um, and as nice as a flag raising is, I, I, in terms of reaching the most people, I think there are a lot of listeners to CBC radio and podcasts. It becomes then a podcast. So I just wondered if I, I would be very happy to make the initial contact if, if that is at all helpful um, with Julianne Hazelwood, or if you think of something else, I'd be very happy to, to look into that too. But I kind of like the idea of getting our our voices out there. And Absolutely. Out. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura, did you have a, a question? I didn't have a question. I was just saying other, something we decided, I think, some time ago is that we used to, when we used to go to different events and have a display, we really didn't have anything. It was kind of left for us to haul it there however we could which isn't very good in many circumstances, right? So we had talked about getting some funding somehow to make a, a display board that was more easily transportable that we could use over and over again kind of thing, just if we ever had to have a table for anything. And one of the thoughts we'd had other years, I believe, is that we might put a little, you know where they sometimes put that piano thing out at town hall or whatever, put it just a little booth outside of town hall and then as people go by, they could see it that week or something, right? But That's a great some, idea. sometimes these things seem to come up and we don't really have any way to deal with them. So if we had something that was kind of permanent, that was a little bit, I had one time with cardboard, you know, it was just ridiculous. And I almost killed me in the cardboard too at one point, <laughs> really it was. But if we had something that was a little bit more poor, like permanent and decent looking, that we could just, whenever something came up, we could go. Because I can go and be there and talk, but I can't haul things anymore, right? That would be great. Mm -hmm. It's Tuesday already, and it starts on the 30th next week, right? Well, I know. Yeah. And, and that's what a rush happened. here for something like that. Yeah, and but we I wonder if Tanya had any suggestions or Brenda had any suggestions on how we can notify the, the public of Accessibility Week. Um. 
Well, I was thinking of like social media, we could possibly speak to marketing and, and get some social media out there that notes that it's accessibility week um, that week. Um, maybe we could possibly share the link that uh, member Leslie had uh, uh, noted, but I can certainly talk to marketing and see what we could get in place to uh, note that important week. Be, and then maybe in the meantime, we could uh, work with uh, you, Councillor Armour, and prepare something better for next year as per um, Member Shaw and, and maybe add a, a flag and preparation as well. Absolutely. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, kind of rushed I would right like now to, to do something like that. But. I'd like to maybe see something for the 2022 budget, maybe if we like sort of earmark it now to put some funds together for maybe a display board or something for our, our next year's budget to be able to to put that together. Julia? I see Julie came on. She probably has something for when, us. When I said budget, she pops in. Um, I actually just sent you, you both an email just to let you know, just to remind you that there, right now there is, we, ha we have had traditionally had funding in the budget for the accessibility committee that you could use. It, it never gets, it traditionally never gets used. So if you guys wanted to use that, that that's certainly something that you could use that funding for. Right now there's $300 for it, but if there was other things next year, as I said, it, just, it never gets used. So I think it's been slowly moved downwards, but um, it's certainly there. Yeah, that's exactly what happened with the money. Go ahead, Laurel. I think we need someone with some design know-how or something to help though. Like before we put up cardboard and sticker, you know what I mean? <laughs> with yeah, our, for sure. So it's not just the money, it's the know-how kind of thing, right? Yeah. So we'll get Tanya to reach out to the, their media personnel, make sure we can, what we can do or have something in place that we can, well, we got $300 there to spend. Maybe we have to buy a little bit of a radio time or something like that. Kay, did you have something? That, uh, no, no, I was just going okay. to say in terms of the, the know-how around the, the display board, like, I do know companies who specialize in that and um, and maybe even our framing uh, mm -hmm. place or something that we could get estimates on, you know, uh, if once we figure out what we think would be excellent to have included. Yes. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we need to be better prepared, that's for sure. Yeah. This is a very important week coming. So. Yeah. And I... Um, just sorry, but off the, I, yep. I would be very happy to drop an email to Julianne. Um, there's no cost in doing that. Nope. Just say, would you be interested in uh, tapping into this? Because I think now she's kind of got like a real interest in this area. And it's something she said she honestly hadn't thought about much before. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's timely because of COVID and, and challenges that everyone faces, but um, I'd be happy to do that if- That would be great if you wouldn't mind doing that. I think everybody I, could definitely support that. I, I would echo that, Kay. I mean, I think you're you're correct. And I think the whole point, and especially my bringing it up this week, and I think Deb even, is just the awareness piece, right? Is yeah. I think that's what we want to, to get out there. And the ability that sometimes there are funds available, like we have the improvement fund for downtown that people can tap into. And I think it's just creating more awareness that there's opportunities out there to make our community more accessible. And I, that, I, that's what I'd like to see. Great. And I, I will make sure that I copy you know, the appropriate people. So we'll talk offline. Yeah. All right, perfect. Good. Uh, does anybody else have anything like to add to the meeting? Let's see me, so get to ask the question. Uh, moved by Laura Shaw, seconded by Kay Leslie, is now that we do recommend that we do adjourn now at 2.24. Does any all in favor? It's Gary. Stay safe, everyone. And um, I look forward to hear what we can do for next week for the, the week.